if you could restore one thing in your life back to its original condition, is there something that comes to mind? Now, I, have a, I have a few thoughts. However, the most practical would be to restore the old church ride-on mower. Now, the church purchased a new ride-on mower a couple of years ago, but we, we still have the old one at, at, at home at the rectory. Uh, and it doesn't work perfectly, and it often has something go wrong every time we use it, but we persist with it because it still runs. However, if we could you know, magically restore it back to its original condition, that would be very helpful for us as a family and very helpful for the church as well. Well, on Monday, we thought about leadership and how God was going to provide a leader for his people who would shepherd them with care and protection. Um, today, we'll see that this leader will bring about the restoration of the people of God. Um, Zechariah 10 verse 6. I will strengthen the house of Judah and deliver the house of Joseph. I will restore them because I have compassion on them. And they will be as though I had never rejected them. For I am the Lord their God and I will answer them. Ephraim will be like a warrior and their hearts will be glad as if with wine. Their children will see it and be glad. Their hearts will rejoice in the Lord. See, God is going to reverse the judgment that he brought on his people. He rejected them because of their sin, but now he will welcome them back as a child who had always been part of his family. Now in Isaiah 24, as part of God's judgment, we read this, Isaiah 24 verse 7, The new wine mourns, the, wine, the vine withers, all the carousers now groan. Okay, but now we're told that the hearts of the people will be gladdened as with wine. Okay, so God is bringing his people back and now is the time to embrace this promise. Again, in Isaiah, we, uh, we're told that God will whistle for flies from Egypt and bees from Assyria and those nations will come in judgment upon his people. However, now we read Zechariah 10 verse 8, I will whistle and gather them because I have redeemed them. They will be as numerous as they once were. Though I sow them among the nations, they will remember me in the distant lands. They and their children will live and return. I will bring them back from the land of Egypt and gather them from Assyria. Now, there are various images that are picked up in Zechariah that point to a hope for the people of God, a hope that will be renewed and they will once again live in a land flowing with milk and honey under the guidance and blessing of God. However, in the Old Testament, these promises remain unfulfilled. In Jesus, however, we are reminded of the imagery that is spoken by Zechariah. Um, as one example in the Gospels, Jesus is asked why his disciples do not fast like John's disciples and the Pharisees. Um, Jesus responds, Mark 2 verse 19, uh, The wedding guests cannot feast fast while the groom is with them, can they? As long as they have the groom with them, they cannot fast. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and the wine is lost as well as the skins. No, new wine is put into fresh wineskins. Now, Jesus could simply be using wine to illustrate the point that he is the groom. However, it's hard not to see the wine imagery from the Old Testament, and especially from Zechariah. Now, in the Gospels, Jesus is the new wine. In Zechariah, Jesus is the promised wine that will gladden the heart. The point being that Jesus is how God will restore his people. And through his death for sins and his resurrection from the dead, all people who put their faith in him will be restored back into relationship with God. And so friends, with that in mind, take a minute to consider why it's important that your relationship with God has been restored. And then take a minute to pray about your restoration.